But what's going on, on YouTube? Wanted to share this audio super resolution repository that I found um, through GPT Sovitz version 3. And um, I've just been doing some initial exploration. So that's what we're going to take a look at. So on the screen here, you see the repository here. Uh, it doesn't seem like it has too many stars, 93. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of stuff that's being released. But uh, I got this up and uh, running on my computer. They have provided some um, pre-trained weights here that you can use for inference. And like I said, I found this from the GPT Sovitz version 3 uh, repository because the um, what is it the output of v3 is kind of low uh, fidelity and when running it with the super resolution it improves immensely so that got me a little interested in the um, the source uh, repository that's being used here so here's an example um, we'll take a listen to this sentence here this is Alma from Monster Hunter Wilds uh, this is the sample output it may be possible that you're not ready to hunt that monster yet. How about you prepare better equipment first before trying to go out again? So there's the output. Sounds good, but the um, audio is kind of low in fidelity. So we can run again with this super resolution model. Start the inference, and then we'll take a listen to it once again. It may be possible that you're not ready to hunt that monster yet. How about you prepare better equipment first before trying to go out again? already so there you go that sounds much better in my opinion so uh, i'm gonna re-inference with this uh, i'm on fourth seed and then i'm gonna save this audio file um and this is the repository that i was testing out so i'm gonna go ahead and save it here and like i said i already have this up and running on my computer so here we go and this is the inference script that uh, they provide you with from the repository and it can be ran in the command line with this um, command here. So we'll just go over this real quick. We've got Python calling the script, the checkpoint file. These are all of the model files, output directory, and then input directory. So if I run this, it's going to run that super resolution on all of the files that I have inside of this test folder. And uh, we can take a listen to them. But here are the input files. Uh, this is the one that we just listened to in GPT Sovitz. Here's one that I generated yesterday. And then here's one of it um, that's a little bit lower resolution. So let's listen to the two new ones. Hunter, I don't think we should be hunting that monster right now. Let's hold off until we receive guild authorization. So that's one. And then here's a different one. Hunter, I don't think we should be hunting that monster right now. Let's hold off until we receive guild authorization. So that one, um, I took the same audio sample and made it even lower quality. Um, and then we can take a listen to the outputs here. So they should be the same. Um, you should see the same difference in quality that we saw in that GPT Sovitz um, GUI. Hunter, I don't think we should be hunting that monster right now. Let's hold off until we receive guild authorization. Hunter, I don't think we should be hunting that monster right now. Let's hold off until we receive guild authorization. So there you can tell um, this this file, the one that I lowered in quality, um, you can see that it was a little too but uh, too far beyond the saving. So it's not 100 percent magic in this case. Uh, it still sounds pretty muddy. Um, it does increase the quality a little bit, but it has like these high pitched static static noises in there um, that, you know, you wouldn't want to use anyway. So not going to recover absolute trash audio, but um, it'll do its best to improve lower fidelity audio as long as it's uh, comprehensible. So that is pretty cool. And um, yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. But inside of the repository, they provide different pre-trained weights. So here we are right here. Um, you've got like 2K to 16, 4 to 16, 8 to 16, 8 to 48K, um, yada, yada, yada. So you've got a bunch of different ones in here that uh, you could test out. The GPT Sovitz repository is using the 24 to 48 one, I believe. Um, and then, um, yeah, that is, uh, it's pretty easy to get up and running. I wanted to make this into kind of like a graphical user interface, a GUI, a Gradio interface. So I might be doing something like that. Uh, just to make it a little bit easier to use, but it depends if I'm going to be using this um, for my audio, if I'm going to need to use it. But yeah, thought this would be interesting for some of you guys out there that maybe want to look into improving some lower fidelity audio. Um, and maybe you could get around to using this repository. Um, I guess I should go over real quick on how you can use it. So if you um, aren't too familiar with 
Python and Git, uh, you would need a little bit of a base knowledge of that first. But let's assume that you have Python and Git um, on your computer. Uh, we just navigate to any terminal and then let me make sure I don't have it. And then yeah, you could just CMD and we would get clone into this repository here. So we take this repository, um, go into the folder, get clone the repository, then we'd CD into it. Um, CD AP dash BWE. Uh, it's going to download all of those files from this um, GitHub repo, repo from this GitHub repo. Um, and then we would just need to create a virtual environment with Python. I, I was running it on 3.11, install the Python requirements, and then uh, you don't have to download the data sets. So um, I just skipped that, that area. But yeah, you would install the Python requirements. It requires that you have um, um, PyTorch and CUDA enabled on your computer. So you can get PyTorch by going to the official website and just going to the run this command area for getting started locally. And then just run, oops, I don't want to install this. So first we create the virtual environment. So I have Python 3.11. Uh, so I would just do this right here, py3-3.11-mvnv, and then it's going to create the virtual environment, venv tab scripts tab and then activate so that'll activate my virtual environment and then I can run this pip install uh, torch command to get all of the torch requirements that I would need um, and then there's all we would need to do after this is to do pip install requirements and I'll show you that real quick after this finishes up so that finished up so you just do pip install um, dash r requirements txt going to install all of the requirements that you need and there's actually one more um, uh, there's one more requirement that's not inside of the requirements.txt file that's needed which is this rich um, library so we can go back into here now this is finishing up um, why is it in, why is it uninstalling my torch here I'll take I'll take a look at this real quick let me uh, verify that my torch version doesn't get uninstalled here all right, we'll go to pip and um, pip show torch. All right, so it uninstalled my my previous torch version, so I'll just reinstall torch. Uh, this is what I'm going to need to use in order to enable CUDA on my Windows um, NVIDIA PC. So if you don't do that, it's going to install it like it was running on Linux, and that's going to uninstall it, and that's going to install it without CUDA enabled. All right, so that should be the end of that, and then all we need to do is uh, pip install rich and it'll install that um, into the virtual environment. So that should get it all set up. And because I have VS code, uh, I can just open this up in a nice, you know, IDE by just typing code dot and that'll open up this um, file or this folder inside of Visual Studio Code, um, which is very nice or VS code. And then yeah, there are a couple of little quirks here, like the inference um, script I recommend you drag out into the root repository so that it has access to this ENV uh, module, which is right here. Um, and then, you know, of course, inside of VS Code, change your virtual environment. And then you would just need to install or download the the models here. So, so you can just highlight all of them, right click, download. Um, and since I already have them installed in or downloaded into a repository, um, I can just take these checkpoints or, you know, whenever you have these checkpoints um, downloaded and then just put them inside of um, my checkpoints folder like this and we should be good to go. So when you go into here, you'll see a bunch of .zip files um, and these are your models. Um, you could technically rename this to, I just found this out yesterday, so I thought this was interesting. These PyTorch models are just zip files, so you could technically rename this .pth, which is something that we see more common um, in uh, with all these AI models, and it'll still work. So um, these are just being saved as .zip, so I thought that was just kind of cool. But yeah, that is pretty much it um, on how you could get this installed onto your uh, computer and use it. Now, installation instructions and your um, ease of installation may vary depending on, you know, how much you've done this and, and yeah. So, it, 
thought it was pretty cool. Just wanted to share it with you guys. And then once again, I'd like to thank all the members of the channel for supporting me. And uh, I'll see you guys later.